I want to be very careful with this, and it's not what I want to say, but the Jezebel spirit has already been here. Before the Word of God was open, there was a platform. It was a high place. On it was a man who ripped his shirt off like a woman does in front of a pole at a strip club. And then he swallowed a sword and Jesus cried, okay, Pastor John, I'll receive that. So that was an interesting moment at a men's conference that happened recently. If you followed any type of evangelical or really even mainstream news, you've seen it all over social media. Um, there was a, a big fallout at a national men's gathering that Mark Driscoll was speaking at. Um, it's really one of the largest men's gatherings in the country. It's, it, 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 it happens every year in uh, Springfield. And if you know what happened, the conference opened with, with a famous um, kind of sideshow circus act, a, a, a sword swallower. Uh, it was a guy that has been featured on America's Got Talent. Uh, he opened the men's conference by basically doing his routine. Um, you know, he's he's a fairly muscular dude, so he ripped off his shirt, swallowed a sword, climbed on a pole, and, like, did his whole America's Got Talent thing. Driscoll uh, gets on stage and basically says uh, that the Jezebel spirit was actually at the conference before the Word of God was even opened. And, and basically um, correlated the man's routine with what you would see at a strip club. Uh, the pastor uh, that was kind of hosting the conference basically told Mark he was out of line um, and asked him to leave the stage. Mark did. Chaos broke out in the arena. Men chanting, bring him back. Men booing. Men glad he was gone. Mark later would come back and apologize. Um, but it was absolute chaos. And, and, you know, the big question in evangelical circles, and this is what I want to address today, the big question was, should Mark um, have done that publicly or should he have went to the conference promoters? Should he have went to the pastors in private and said, hey, uh, this is what I'm feeling about this. This is what I think Scripture says about this. I'm offended by this. This should not have happened. Uh, so the question was, did Mark handle this appropriately? And I absolutely think that's the wrong question. Man, I think we're asking the wrong question. I think the right question and the question we should be asking is, is why do we have men shirtless swallowing swords and climbing on poles at men's conferences to begin with? Why is that even a thing? You know, this conference is kind of notorious for those things. I think it was a couple years back, they actually had a tank drive through the middle of the conference, crush some cars, and inside driving the tank was Chuck Norris, who popped out of the tank to the cheers of whatever it is, 10, 12, 15,000 men. Which again begs the question, why is Chuck Norris driving a tank through the middle of a Christian men's gathering? where men are getting together to spur one another on and encourage one another and build one another up to hear a message from God's messengers. And listen, I love Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris is one of my all-time heroes. He's a Texas legend. I have a picture uh, that Chuck signed to me of him holding two machine guns. Like, what I love about a good Chuck Norris movie is that he never ran out of ammunition and he never reloaded. Go back and watch any movie from the 70s and 80s. He never reloads. He just keeps firing. I love Chuck Norris. The question is, why do we need tanks and Chuck Norris and shirtless men climbing pose at a men's conference about the Word of God? about masculinity, about manhood. I think Charles Spurgeon was right a couple of hundred years ago when he said, if we create a circus to bring men in, we have to maintain a circus every single week. To say it another way, what we win people with 
is what we're winning them to. I think Spurgeon was right 200 years ago. If we, if we create a circus to draw people in, we have to maintain a circus every week. To say it another way, what we win people with is what we're winning them to. We're not winning them with the Word of God. We're not winning them with God's design for manhood and masculinity. What we're winning them with are tanks and monster trucks and sword swallowers, and ultimately that's what we're winning them to. We're winning them to entertainment. So what the church has to do to maintain the men is entertain the men. And here's the reality, brothers. We can't beat the world at entertainment. The world will always be more entertaining than the kingdom. That's what the world specializes in. That's what the world majors in. The world wants to entertain us to death. And then the church is just running headlong after the world. And, and this is what happens. People in the world are then watching this, and they're thinking, is that what biblical manhood and masculinity is all about? So, so believe, unbelievers, men all across the world are watching this nonsense. They're watching people fight about a guy swallowing a sword. They're watching Chuck Norris drive a tank into the middle of an arena, and they're thinking to themselves, is that what biblical manhood and masculinity is all about? We, we are literally the brunt end of a joke. So the world, the outside world is looking at this, this absolute dumpster fire and saying, that's biblical manhood? That's biblical masculinity, and, and they're laughing at us. We have become a caricature. No wonder men don't want to join God's church. No wonder men don't want to associate with Christianity. We're, we're, we're a laughing stock. We're a joke. We're, we're shirtless men on pose, and we're um, 80s action stars driving tanks. That's what we are. And not only is that a terrible caricature, it's, a, it's an awful stereotype. The church has got to stop stereotyping men. I don't, I don't think I can go to another wild game feed. I don't think I can go to another axe-throwing event. <laughs> like at some point, we've got to stop saying, this is what satisfies men, this is what entertains men, and start giving men what they really need, which is biblical community and the Word of God. That is enough. And if you say, well, Chris, biblical community, real authentic community and the Word of God isn't enough to draw 8,000 men together, then maybe we shouldn't be drawing 8,000 men together. Give me 80 men who want community and who want the Word of God, and you'll change the world. You can have the 8,000. You can have the 8,000 that want to be entertained by a tank. You can have the 8,000 that want to be entertained by some guy on America's Got Talent. What does that have to do with the kingdom of God? Absolutely nothing. What have we learned over the last 20 or 30 years? You can pack stadiums full of men and nothing changes. And in this case, We've packed stadiums full of men, and we've become the laughing stock of culture. This is so tragic. This has nothing to do with whether or not Mark Driscoll was in the right or in the wrong. It has everything to do with what are we doing? Why do we have to have circus acts and sh sideshow acts and, and Chuck, Nor Chuck Norris driving a tank and monster trucks, and Lamborghinis to, to draw in the hearts of men. <laughs> instead, of, instead of giving men what they want, we should be giving men what they need. And here's the deal. At some point, the church went from entertaining the Spirit of God to entertaining the people sitting in the seats. We have got to get back to entertaining the Spirit of God. We have got to get back to the basics, right? The Word of God. We've got to see the Word, hear the Word, sing the Word, preach the Word, 
read the word. We've got to get back to the word of God, and we've got to get back to the fellowship and the community of God. Not arenas full of monster trucks and army tanks, but the simple, pure community and word of God. That's enough. That's enough. And you start with 80 faithful, and it grows to 500 and 2,000 and 10,000. That's enough. Stop asking the question, was Mark right or was Mark wrong? Start asking the question, why in the world are we opening a biblical conference with a dude from America's Got Talent? Why are we opening a biblical conference with Chuck Norris driving an army take through the middle of the arena? Why do we keep giving men sugar when what they need is substance? Substance. You get back to that, and then everything changes. That's the question everybody should be asking. And really, it's probably how Mark should have handled it. Instead of potentially embarrassing that guy, instead of intentionally uh, or potentially embarrassing uh, the conference host, Mark should have asked the question, why do we find something that really repulsive so entertaining? Why does a shirtless man swallowing a phallic object climbing a pole, why do we find that so entertaining? (laughs) Why does that nourish our soul versus the Word of God? That, if I'm Mark Driscoll, that's how I would have opened my sermon. That's probably what he should have done. So, brothers, if you're going to church, if you're going to an event, if you're gathering with other men to see Chuck Norris driving an army tank, just stay home and Netflix a bunch of 80s action films. You'll get plenty of Chuck Norris. No, find a place where you can go meet with the people of God, and meet God through the Word of God, that's when you'll see change. That's when you'll see growth. That's what I have to say about this.